we've all heard him here um, before. He, he, he's, his fa- he's a favorite here in the war room. Uh, you've seen him on ESPN's first take, arguing with the likes of uh, Skip Bayless and the rest of those guys, and he writes for ESPNNewYork.com. Welcome back into the war room, Rob Parker. What's up, Rob? What's happening? How you guys doing tonight? Pretty good. Rob, good. How, are how are you? Rob, what's up, man? Everything is what's great. Up, Rob? Yeah, absolutely, on? absolutely. Rob, Rob, I want to start it off. This is Jimmy, by the way. I just want to ask you a quick question what everybody is talking about. The Celtics and the Lakers both, uh, my my preseason picks, there that goes, uh, they find themselves in two old holes. And the Thunders and Bulls have uh, lost the home court advantage. So what's your opinion of the playoffs thus far? Uh, it's been uh, surprising so far. Not so much the Miami Boston. I, I mean, I know a lot of people are making a big deal out of that. I just have to wait to see when the Celtics come home how they play. Uh, I know they didn't play great in Miami, but I expected Miami to hold court, home court, you know, and win games there. So that wasn't that sh- shocking to me. Uh, the Lakers is the most shocking thing I've seen because. Uh, and, and not even game one. You know, game two where they know they can't really afford to lose another home game and come out with a lackluster performance like they had last night, that that was kind of surprising. So, uh, you know, and, and then the same thing, the Bulls. I, I haven't been buying the Bulls all year. Uh, it's Derrick Rose and a lot of other guys. Carlos Boozer obviously must – that turf toe must really be bad because he looks really bad. Uh, and then uh, the Thunder and Memphis, you know, I mean, it's just a little different talking about the Oklahoma City and Memphis, but they got good teams <laughs> and they got good young players, you know. So it's, yeah. been, it's, been, a, it's been a different kind of playoff so far. Okay. Right, so, okay. So, so that's this is Devin, Rob. Um, so that's what you think of the playoffs so far. So. While we're standing here with all the series where they are, how do you actually think it's going to shake out? Like, what are your predictions? Who's going to represent the East? Who's going to represent the West? And who's going to win that trophy this year? Uh, You know what? Unless Pau Gasol is hurt or there's something there that I don't understand because he's playing like he's hurt, like something's wrong with him. He's much better, a much better player than he's played last year in the playoffs. He had 20 and 11. He averaged 20 and 11. This year is 14 and 8. And I'm talking about a bad 14 and 8. Uh, so I, I still like the Lakers, and I still like Boston. I still think those two teams could wind up there. I know everybody thinks it's crazy because they're both down 0-2. Uh, but I still think both of those teams can make it. I know they're older, and I know they're banged up. And I don't trust Dallas. I mean, obviously I give Miami a better shot uh, than Dallas. I'm not a big Dallas fan. I've seen this team choke before. Don't forget the uh, NBA Finals in 2005. They won the first two games in Miami and never won another game. So I'm not that sold on Dallas yet. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, Dirk. I mean, he has a history, you know, and he has a reputation for for kind of laying down in big situations. But at this point, Dirk is looking a little unstoppable. Uh, I mean, it, it's the matchups, but. Yeah, but the only thing I would the only thing I would say about that is if if the Lakers and even the Celtics had played well and lost, then I would buy more into it. I just don't think either of them played well. I remember the same thing happened in the Boston Knicks series. Everybody said, "Oh, Boston, you know, they the Knicks could have won the first two games." Well, Boston really didn't play well at all in those two games. And I said they had a a good game in them and they came to New York for game 3 and they blew the Knicks out right out of the box. So I'm just saying, if if the if the Celtics play a good game and lose in Boston, obviously it's over. Uh, right. If the Lakers play a good game and and get beat, you know, then I'll say it's over. But those teams haven't played up to their potential. If they both right. play up to their potential, there's going to be seven game series. And then you got Ron Artest being suspended for Game Three, so that's going to be a hurdle the Lakers Lakers have to jump over. So. Yeah, it will be. I think it's kind of lame. I, I mean, I know it's the end of the game and it didn't look good, but I didn't think he got thrown out the game. You know, it's so sensitive in the NBA. You can't do anything. I don't think it was that Thank terrible. You. He didn't have a I cold agree. hand. I just think that David Stern sometimes goes overboard with that stuff. That's it's just, He got thrown out the game. That's enough. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, <laughs> David Stern being, uh, being the dictator. I think he. I think he felt the pressure to do it because – 
it seemed like everybody was reporting this morning, like, yeah, Ron Artest probably should be thrown out for game three. And then you know how he probably hears all the time that they, they may have a Laker bias. He probably did it just from the pressure, and he shouldn't have done it. But, nope, I agree. Shouldn't have been done, but who knows? You know, that stuff is always is always fishy to me anyway. <laughs> we got a fellow conspiracy theorist in the house. We agree. Um, Rob, this is Brad. Just to change gears a little bit, um, the NFL draft just happened. What, what what are your thoughts on Cam Newton being taken with the first pick overall? I, I was glad to see it. I think he deserved to be the first pick. When you play that well in college, win a national championship, and, and do the things, and this wasn't like – some undersized guy or some guy who, you know, you really question whether or not he had the stature to play in the league. I don't think that that was the issue. And most of the stuff that they talked about, the off the field kind of stuff, that's all nonsense to me. Can the guy play? He can play. Can he shake off uh, linebackers and linemen and make a play downfield? Does he have a big arm? I, I just, I just think if he would have got passed up, that would have been a slap in the face to everything that he accomplished in major college football. And I think he deserves yeah. that, the way that they give guys the benefit of the doubt. Uh, white quarterbacks, I just think that uh, he sh- he should have been the number one pick, and I'm glad he was. Oh, good point, good point. I, I think that um, he definitely deserved to be the first quarterback taken. Um, I thought the quarterback class overall was kind of weak, so I thought maybe there should have been another position drafted at that number one spot, but there's a bias towards quarterbacks anyway, so – and, well, and but you, also, but you, they needed a, but they needed a quarterback though. You know what I mean? You're talking about a team yeah. that really needed a quarterback, so it only made sense. And if you pass up on a guy like that, and he winds up being, you know, a big time player in the league, you look, it'll be crazy to pass up when you need a quarterback. Jimmy Clausen, uh, it was pretty obvious that guy is not going to be good enough uh, to do the job, right? So I think they made the right, right. decision. Yeah. Hey, 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 uh, hey, Rob. This is a kill. Hey, uh, I have one for you. Uh, which teams positively stood out to you with their overall draft? You know what? I never really get into that because I'm still waiting for the day when one team says that they didn't have a good draft. Because <laughs> it's, all, it's, all, it's all propaganda. I hear the same stories every year on the draft, and and the same thing that the draft experts always tell you. If a team picks some of the guys that they had up high, those are the teams that they say had great drafts because it makes them look better uh, in, in making these selections. So I really don't pay attention to that stuff because I've heard it all. I've seen so many buzz, so many people tell me this guy's going to be great and, oh, what a great draft. I've heard it in Detroit with the Lions forever. Oh, the Lions got so many great <laughs> playmakers, <laughs> and, and I read – guys in Sports Illustrated who picked them to win 10 games, and, and I don't even want to say who it was, but I, I read, I think it was in Sports Illustrated, the Lions are going to have a breakout season and win 10 games, and they wind up going 0-16 that year. So, so much of that stuff is just propaganda and people trying to step out and, and predict or say something so that they could come back and say, I told you they had this and that. And I think most people really just don't know. And I love – a lot of the guys, and, like, you know, you talk to people who just haven't seen these guys play enough to make a call on them. So I just – I always stay away from that. You know why? Because I haven't seen enough of these guys really play, except for the big-time guys. Other than that, I just don't know. Honesty yeah. and candor. Honesty and candor. We love that. That's, that's the same with me, man. It's, uh, the whole – with Mel Kuyper and Tom McShay, what they do, I would never be able to do that. I, I can't watch all of those guys play from the small schools and the, the, the mid-majors, and there's just too much going on. So I'm right. like, yeah, I agree. I, I somebody, you. Yeah. Somebody, in our, somebody in our chat room said that Todd McShay came out and said that Andrew Luck is so good that whoever gets the number one pick next year should just automatically trade their quarterback regardless of who it is. So how do you say <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what kind of, but, you know. Anyway, Rob, change gears a little bit. It's a quick question. Um, good or bad thus far, what is your biggest surprise in um, the baseball season that has just started? Um, well, I guess I would say how bad the Red Sox are. They lost eleven to nothing today. Uh, they're, pretty, they're bad. Yeah, eleven to nothing to the Angels, and and you know people can say whatever they want. They had, they made the big moves. Carl Crawford still batting under two hundred, and they got Adrian Gonzalez. Everybody and their uncle said the Red Sox. Oh, they got the pitching. 
oh, look at their lineup, this, that, the other thing. And they were in last place in the American League East and doing a good job at being at last place. Cleveland Indians, of course, are playing well. <laughs> and, and that's a shocker because I just I didn't think that they had uh, the arms that they have, but they got some good young pitchers, and uh, they're doing real well. Those are my two biggest shockers so far in baseball, that the Red Sox are in last place and that Cleveland's in uh, first place in the Central. Yeah, okay. I, I, I okay. definitely I drank the uh, the Red Sox aid myself. Yes, you did. <laughs> this, is, this is Dev again. Um, we're going to get you out of here on this one. Um, talk a little bit about the Twitterverse. What are your thoughts on the whole Rashard Mendenhall, Bin Laden tweets, and his subsequent apology slash clarifications? Where do you stand on that? Yeah, my, my only thing is, and, and I – the thing I don't like about people is, you know, when it's convenient for them, they want to forget about what this country is built on, which is freedom of speech and freedom of expression, and, and you have those rights. Okay? Now, now once you say asinine stuff, you have to take the brunt of it or, or whatever. I mean, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have the right to say it or whatever. I mean, we in this country have – allowed and let the Ku Klux Klan take out permits and march downtown. They have their right to do it. Skinheads have the right to have a parade and say their, you know, propaganda, whatever they want to say. But people have a right to come out and and yell against them. And the same thing with Mendenhall. I mean, he has a right to say whatever he wants to say, but he can't be squeamish after the fact when people attack him because they don't like it. Uh, So he has a right to say it. And I don't have an issue with him saying it, but he has to be man up and, and you know what, and take the hit for saying it when you put that stuff out there like that. Yeah. <laughs> we we actually, we're going to speak about that whole situation uh, towards the end of the show. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be, but it kind of turned into our main topic this week. But, Rob, once again, man, we, we thank you for coming on. And uh, we see you on your next visit. So you can uh, All right, come on I appreciate the forum it. and spread the gospel. Oh, uh, when are you going to be on the show? Uh, I was on, on today, and I'll be on tomorrow. Me and Skip will be on tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. on ESPN2. All right. Eat his so everybody check him out. Take his lunch. Everybody check that out. <laughs> All oh, right, yeah. Bro, no, bend him up. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll talk to you next time. All Thanks, right, take it easy, guys. Yep, bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Rob. Rob. Yep. Peace out, Rob. Rob Parker, Parker everybody. ESPN, everybody. Kuwait is the war room with five nights at the round table, five Philly guys diversified and educated.